Hey, we've got some double angle formulas in store for us today. All right. So we're going to look at a double angle formula for sine, a double angle formula for cosine, a double angle formula for tangent. In a moment, you'll see that that was not totally completely accurate in that. As I said, there was one formula for each. <laughs> well, for sine, there is just one choice. If I've got sine of 2u, it's equal to 2 sine u cosine u. So if I want to double the angle in the sine function, it's the same as if I took the sine of that angle, multiplied by the cosine of that angle, and then double the result. Tangent of 2u. Math, eh, there's just one choice. Becomes 2 times tangent of u divided by 1 minus tangent squared u. Cosine is where it gets really, really interesting. If I want cosine of 2u... I've got three choices, three different things it's equivalent to. It's equivalent to cosine squared u minus sine squared u. It's equivalent to two cosine squared u minus one. And it's equivalent to one minus two sine squared u. Now, all those are equivalent, but when we're solving equations or trying to verify an identity, uh, sometimes if you pick the correct one, it makes life a lot easier. If you don't pick the best choice, you can still get the question done, but it takes a lot more steps. So part of the key here is just trying to figure out when to use each one of the variations on that identity for cosine. Okay, so uh, let's pretend I want to find some exact values. I know that the cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths. I know I'm in quadrant number 4, right? Theta is greater than 3 pi over 2, but theta is also less than 2 pi. So I'm in quadrant number 4. Cosine of theta has a value of 5 thirteenths. If I want to double the angle, what would be the sine, cosine, and tangent, right? What is sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta? Well, if cosine is 5 thirteenths, I know adjacent is 5. I know hypotenuse is 13. I know who's going to help me out here. It's the Pythagorean theorem. And we've done this triangle so often, you're probably starting to remember it. Just like, you know, the 3, 4, 5 triangle, where you come across the 8, 15, 17 triangle. This is that 5, 12, 13 triangle. Uh-oh. But if I actually try to use 12, my answers are going to be all be off. Why is that? Again. What quadrant are we in? My triangle has to be drawn in quadrant four. Now remember, whenever I draw one of these triangles, the adjacent side must be on the x-axis. The hypotenuse will always originate from the origin. And then the opposite side will be vertical. So in quadrant four, the x coordinate, the value associated with cosine, because it's the adjacent side, has to be positive. By definition, the hypotenuse is always positive. But in quadrant number four, 
the value of sine is negative because the y coordinates are negative. Okay, so let's go find some exact values now that we know what we're looking at. Sine of 2u. 2 sine u cosine u. Right? So, of course, we're using theta as our specific variable instead of our universal variable. So sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Of course, sine of theta is negative 12 thirteenths. Cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths. Two times 12 is 24, 24 times five, 120. There is a negative involved, so the answer is negative. 13 times 13, 169. Cosine of two theta, does not matter which of the three identities I choose, I will have the exact same answer. I decided to just use two cosine squared theta minus one because I already knew cosine theta from the beginning as being 5 thirteenths. Of course, 5 times 5 is 25. Then I have to multiply that by 2 to get 50. 13 times 13 is 169. Of course, I want a common denominator, so 1 is 169 over 169. I can subtract, I get a negative 119 over 169. Now, if you're looking at that, say, wait a minute, how can cosine be negative? Well, our triangle might be in quadrant number four, but we don't want the cosine of that angle. We want the cosine of double that angle. Right, so while our original angle may have been in quadrant number four, when we double that angle, we're no longer in quadrant number four. Right, depending on the specific angle, we most likely landed somewhere in quadrant number two. And that's why cosine comes out negative. Actually, no, we're gonna have to be in quadrant number three because sine was also negative. So whatever angle we had there in quadrant four, when we doubled it, we actually ended up in quadrant number three because both sine and cosine are coming out negative. So if you're wondering how on earth did cosine of two theta come out to be negative when cosine of theta is positive, you got to think about what quadrant was the original triangle in, but then what quadrant are we in when we double the angle? Tangent, I don't have any choice. Well, actually I do, right? Because I can be sneaky here and say, okay, since I already know the sine of 2 theta and the cosine of 2 theta, why don't I just use the good old tangent as sine over cosine routine instead of worrying about the double angle formula? Because right? I already know what the sine of 2 theta is. I already know what the cosine of 2 theta is. Negative divided by negative cancels out. Of course, we always take the first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And there's our answer. Exact value 120 over 119. All right, in quadrant three, sine is negative, cosine is negative, tangent is positive. All right, sine of two theta, that's easy substitution. You know, it's gonna be two sine theta, cosine theta. I see a common factor, greatest common factor, two cosine theta. Now that it's factored, Set each factor equal to zero. Solve each equation. If cosine
cosine of theta equals zero. I have not gone left or right, so it's gonna be the top of the unit circle or the bottom of the unit circle. In other words, it's gotta be pi over two or three pi over two. Sine of theta is negative one. That's the bottom of the unit circle. Three pi over two. Right, so this is kind of interesting because from the cosine of theta, I will get two answers. From the sine of theta, I get one answer. But notice if sine of theta equals negative one, that's the exact same location for cosine of theta being equal to zero when we're at three pi over two. So even though at first glance I'm thinking, hey, I'm getting two answers for cosine and then one more answer from sine, I'm only getting two answers. All right, pi over two, because that's where cosine of theta is zero. 3 pi over 2, because cosine of theta happens to be 0 there. And as an added bonus, sine of theta is negative 1 there. So there's just two solutions. Verify, one of my favorite things to do. Of course, I'm going to start with the left-hand side of the equation. Boy, I don't have anything to substitute for cosine of the fourth power or sine of the fourth power. Well, let's brush off some uh, factoring skills. It looks like a squared minus b squared. Right? If I want to factor a squared minus b squared, I just have a plus b times a minus b. Right, so a squared minus b squared is going to be a plus b times a minus b. Right, if you want to double check that with FOIL, cosine squared theta times cosine squared theta will make cosine to the fourth power theta. Outer and inner will cancel because outer gets me a negative cosine squared theta sine squared theta. Inner gets me a positive cosine squared theta, sine squared theta, so those cancel out. And then last, sine squared theta times sine squared theta would be sine to the fourth power theta. Oh, one of them had a negative sign, so sure enough, I need a negative. Now, of course, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, that's just one. All right, that's one of the substitutions I'm allowed to make. So now I'm looking at cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Hmm. Well, what substitution comes into play here? Oh, that by definition, right? That's one of our double angle choices for cosine of theta. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's on our reference guide is just cosine of two theta. Now well, the static clears and it looks like it's worksheet six three.